Today, I'm making lengua de res, cow tongue, and I'm going to stew it in a tomato salsa. Recently, I visited San Antonio. I have family there. I was, I'm born and raised in Houston, Texas. I still live in the greater Houston area, but San Antonio is my home away from home. I love to visit there. I frequent all the local cafes. While I was there on personal business, we all got hungry and decided to just pull over to the closest restaurant to eat. And it happened to be Tinka Taco. For my locals there, you probably know of this place. So anyways, we ordered off the menu, but someone at the table ordered a taco de lengua and it was stewed in a tomato salsa. I think on the menu it's called lengua entomatada. Long story short, I tried a piece of the lengua on a chip just to give it a try. It was so good, and I knew I had to come home and recreate it for my husband because I know he wants to try it. So you could use the first part of this recipe video to just cook the cow tongue if you just want simple tacos de lengua, but I'm going to take it a step further and create a flavorful tomato salsa and stew it until it's tender for tacos. Ooh, it's gonna be so good. Here I have a three pound cow tongue. I have it in a large bowl with water. I'm going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm going to sprinkle on some coarse sea salt and scrub well. I'm gonna clean this very well and I'm definitely going to rinse it one or two times after. Now that it's cleaned well, I'm going to add it to a pot of boiling water. Here I have three and a half quarts or 14 cups of boiling water. To that I'm adding a tablespoon of salt, a half teaspoon of black peppercorns, five to six cloves of garlic, two dried bay leaves, half of a large onion. I'm going to offset the lid and let that boil and simmer over a medium to medium high heat for about two and a half to three hours or until tender. Now I'm going to work on my salsa. Here I have six large Roma tomatoes, one large jalapeno, two small tomatillos. Here I have two dried guajillo chiles, five to six cloves of garlic with the skin on and a quarter of a large onion. I'm going to have the Roma tomatoes because they are large and just place them back on the baking sheet. You can definitely roast your salsa in the oven, on the stove top in a large pan, just char really well. You could also boil these ingredients, but I find it convenient to roast in the oven. I did leave the skin on the garlic, you don't want it to burn. These are going into a preheated oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. Okay, so everything is cooked and charred. I'm gonna let this set here, remove the skin from the garlic and the stem from the jalapeno before blending. For my guajillo chiles, I'm going to bring a pot of water to boil. I clean them already with the stem and seeds. Once it boils for a minute, shut off the heat and let them steep until softened. So I'm also adding some cumin seeds. I didn't have ground cumin, I'm out. So I'm just gonna grind my own and actually grinding your own cumin seeds is so fragrant. I'm going to be using a teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna add also two teaspoons of beef bouillon powder with all of my salsa ingredients into the blender. Here I have a half cup of that soaking liquid from the guajillo chiles. And now I'm just going to puree and blend. After you blend your salsa, you definitely can strain, but my Vitamix does a great job, so I'm not gonna strain them today. So once it's done, I'm going to set aside until I'm ready to use it. Okay, so it's been two hours and 45 minutes, and I'm gonna check my cow tongue here. And once you poke it with a fork and it has no resistance coming out, it's ready and this is really tender. So I think three hours, around two hours and 45 minutes to three hours is perfect. I'm also going to reserve some of the broth. While it's still hot, you'll want to carefully remove the membrane and it is hot, but if you let it cool, it gets kind of hard to peel off of your meat. So now I'm just going to slice and cube the meat. And you know the part that looks kind of crazy there at the top? I don't trim that off. I like all of that meat. It really has this like melt in your mouth texture. So I'm going to work around a lot of the gristle and fat on that part and clean it up and I'm going to use it. So now I'm just going to slice my lengua here and cube it. 
into bite-sized pieces. You can definitely chop and shred and go ahead and make tacos just like this. In a large pan that's already preheated, I'm adding a tablespoon or two of cooking oil and the last quarter of that large onion. I just chopped it. I'm going to saute until softened. And then I'm going to add all of my chopped meat. By the way, in this entire recipe, I had one large onion to use, and I did well. Some of it went to, into the salsa, the boiling liquid, and the rest went right into this saute. So I'm going to cook this, or saute it, for about five minutes until I start seeing fond at the bottom of the pan. That'll be flavor into this dish. So now I'm going to take my puree and pour it right into the pan. Once I pour it into the pan, I'm going to start scraping up the fond. Again, this is going to just be amazing. The flavor in this dish is just wonderful. So I'm going to give it a mix. Now I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of the broth. Give that a mix. And remember the broth does have salt in it, but after tasting it, I'm going to add salt to taste and pepper to taste. And that is to your preference, so you'll want to taste this. So I'm going to give it a mix. I'm going to cover and simmer for about 30 to 35 minutes. For today's tacos, I'm using flour tortillas. These are homemade. If you want the recipe for these, I will link it in the description below or somewhere throughout this video. But this is perfect for recreating the tacos that I had the other day. So good. Okay, so this is ready. I'm going to turn off the heat, give it a mix, and it's ready to serve. And I gotta tell you, this smells exactly like the restaurant style tacos de lengua. This just, oh, I can't wait. And you could serve this with rice and beans, but I'm keeping it simple, just like this. There's so much flavor going on in this simple taco. That was the perfect bite, so good. So I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.